Hey guys, what's going on? It's Trip here from TripAdvice.com, and today I'm doing a very special interview with Justin Wayne, and you might have seen him on his YouTube channel, which is, what is it, YouTube.com slash? Justin Wayne Dating. Justin Wayne Dating, which is the same as your uh, URL, right? JustinWayneDating.com. Yes, same thing. Awesome. Very cool. So I would, I've just been so excited to interview Justin. There's a lot of talk going on about his videos and and what he does. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it, uh, but he does have some really cool information and stuff that I want him to share with us today, and I want to go into the controversy a little bit and see what's going on because uh, that definitely affects you who is watching because you get to understand better you know, what stuff works, what doesn't, why people are getting upset. I mean, the reason why people are getting upset over your stuff says a lot about um, – people in general in terms of how they're processing this stuff, how they're learning this stuff, and whether they're implementing or just being haters or whatever. So it, it all works together. Justin, thanks for doing this interview, man. No, you're very welcome. And uh, Trip, it's been great working with you as well. Um, Trip, you're an awesome guy. I love your advice and love the way you always tell people to be authentic. And uh, that's something like what we're going to talk about with this whole relationship management uh, type of thing. Cool. Awesome. So... In terms of being, let's just start there. In terms of being yeah. authentic, do you think that all the stuff that you do is authentic and the stuff that you teach? Um, this is a really good question. Uh, yes, I do think so, ultimately speaking. So in terms of relationships, that's the ultimate thing you want to get with a girl, right? And when it comes to my relationships, I'm very, very straightforward and honest about who I am and what I want. I mean, when I say honest, I mean extremely honest. So um, I think one mistake that most people make, most men, is that they think that being honest to a woman basically means being laced with her, wanting other women, and um, telling her that you don't want other women, you just want her, right? <laughs> and even though they might not cheat on her or whatever, they still think that, well, hey, you know what, I'm being authentic because I didn't cheat on her or anything like that. But you're still not being authentic to yourself if that's what you're looking for. So. In my situation, I decided, you know what, you know, I, ha I hated having to deal with the drama of, you know, you know, you know, having a girl and wanting to date other girls still, and you know, being afraid to face the consequences of her breaking up with me or anything else. I just hated dealing with that drama, and I was like, well, wouldn't it be really good if I can just really just have a woman love me for me, and mean not just meaning me uh, as a boyfriend, but as a boyfriend who is himself, who likes to have sex with other women or who likes to do certain things. Like whatever I'm into that time, you know, I'd prefer to find a girl that loves it for me. And I think that's the ultimate of authenticity as opposed to like just um, doing the typical standard, you know, get a girlfriend and just as long as she doesn't find out, it's fine, you know? So that's basically the way I, type of, I kind of look at things. I think it's the most authentic. What if you know, someone yeah. wants that though? What if there's someone out there who's like, who truly just doesn't want to be with other women, wants to be with that one person? Do you think that person's being authentic? Oh yeah, great. Exactly. If that's what they, if that's exactly what they want, you know. So as long as you're doing what you want and you and you're upfront, you're honest with the girl, especially when getting into a relationship. Uh, that's an asterisk there. Relationship. And I'm not just talking about, um, you know, I'm not just talking about, um, you know stuff like when you first meet a girl you know like if you ask for directions you know some people say oh you lied to her you're supposed to, you're supposed to tell you like her right away right <laughs> now i'm talking about that i'm talking about a situation where you know she, it's, it starts being important where okay now there's expectation that's when you need to be honest the most and same thing for girls you know a lot of times when girls meet guys you know like when you first meet a girl first day does she tell you how much guys she had sex with does she tell you the time she got raped does she tell you the time she did something slutty no Right, but as she gets, when you guys get in a serious relationship, and if that's the type of stuff we want to know, then it'll be great for her to tell you if that's what you wanted to know. Right, it's the same thing for uh, I tell the guys as well. So like when I first meet a girl, I don't, I'm not gonna tell her, hey, you know what? Um, I have like five girlfriends right now, and you can be the the sixth one if you want. You know, right, <laughs> of course right. not. So Let's say yeah. the girls that, that you're dating right now. Well, first of all, how many girls are you dating right now, like in total? Uh, I would just say like around five. And some random girls here and there. And so they all know that you're dating other girls. Yes, they they generally all know. Yes, they all know. They all know. Is yes. one here right now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Kelly. You know, she just came inside. Yeah. Oh, Kelly. <laughs> We're talking about you. 
<laughs> yeah, she's a lovely girl. Does I, she speak you know, English? Of course. <laughs> of course she does. <laughs> All right. So, so basically, yeah. So the way I look at this is that, um, you know, I just believe in, you know, people being transparent and honest about who they are when it becomes important. When people start getting feelings, that's the most important time, as opposed to beforehand, you know, like people think, well, should I tell her everything when I first meet her, like the first day? Like, no. I mean, she doesn't care that much. Only when she cares is when she, sh when she should know, basically. Right. So you are dating all these girls at the same time, and you actually put out a video where some of them... Or maybe I think it was like three of them were so obsessed with you that they actually tattooed your name on themselves. Is that right? Yeah, five, well, it's five hot girls tattooed ugly man's name. That's the name of the video. But yeah, it's so five. Five girls. Yeah. For real. They tattooed <laughs> yeah. on <laughs> themselves. And that Justin is you. Yes. Wow. That's incredible. Over how long of a period did that occur? Oh, um... Yeah, I would say in the path, like, you know, a year and a half or something like that. Uh, it's not like, I wasn't like outwardly like looking for the like, thousands of people to do it with. It's just that, you know, I have certain things that I like to do. And again, I don't recommend pe any, just like, I don't did recommend you, just Did you put their names on, your, on you? All here, man. No, I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because um, I, I just don't play having tattoos in general. Okay, but they're cool. So how did that conversation come up? Like, is this is something you, like, pre-planned? Like, I'm going to get five girls to tattoo my name on themselves. And you were just like, let's start this process? Or did it kind of happen <laughs> once? And you're like, I wonder if this is going to happen again. Was this a coincidence? Was this a goal of yours? Like, how did this all come up? Okay, um, you know, this came up basically, I would say, after experimenting a little bit. Like, again, I'm, I am a, I do like to experiment with social interactions, but... The type of experiment I do is only with girls I actually am into. So I'm not like I'm not going to be there. Like, I'm not the type of guy who's just going to experiment with a girl, like do all that stuff and be with her just for fun, you know, like just only for fun. That's be the girl that I actually legitimately connect with, and I'm not going to feel bad about having to do that stuff. So that's one thing I want to throw out there. It's not like uh, any random girl. Like there's been girls like who would do that for me, but I wouldn't let them because I just knew that I wouldn't be around them for the long term, you know. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's one disclaimer I want to throw out there. But, uh, yeah, basically, the conversation is not really – it's a process. It's like the whole thing is called the locking process. I don't, I don't know if you remember in the video we talk about it. And the locking process is the idea that, you know, as a woman's falling in love with you, you want to fall in love with the real you. And there's a bunch of other things that she has to do beforehand before she, you know, get a tattoo with your name on it, right? So it's not like, I'm not like jumping from, from like, you know, I just met her, we got in a relationship, and now I'm just asking, you know, she puts on her tattoo. That's not how it works. Um, there's a lot of progressive things that happen up to that point. So one thing might be, uh, you know, just the general idea of her accepting me with other women. You know, that alone is a big, is a big deal, even before the tattoo. So there's like other stuff as well. Or our general relationship dynamics, you know, like, um, you know, her, you know, being used to chasing me instead of me chasing her, you know. Uh, she's gonna have to like want to get a tattoo like not every girl just wants to get a tattoo well and well okay want to get a tattoo of a name yes right? well this is the thing most most of the girls didn't not all besides one were not that was the first that, that was the first and only tattoo so then they weren't that the most of them weren't necessarily tattoo based girls so that part we got overrided more so just about they just wanted to please me you know where they get turned on or the idea of just pleasing me and I get turned on from that idea as well. So it reached to that point. But obviously, like, if you understand the sequence of like, the locking process I teach, then it makes sense by the time, why wouldn't they do it? You know what I mean? So it seemed from the outside eye, like, what the fuck? How is this happening, right? But obviously, from my eye, it's like, oh, it only makes sense. Like, if she did this, 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 and this for me, why would she want to lose? Uh, why would she not want to do this for me, too? Okay, so what are, give me a few examples of what this this and this are like before the tattoo okay I, one big one for example at least a small thing that people could do this is a little called, small by the way i'm like blanking out there's like an actual term for this locking process uh there's that but there's something else like uh, like you mean what i talk it, about or well, it's, a, that? it's a it's it's uh it's also a the yes ladder in sales in, what, what's Sorry. that the yes ladder in sales it's yes kind of like yes ladder it's also like part of like if you ever uh read robert shildini's book uh what's it called influence 
a long time ago, like but I don't know. Someone to agree to something small first, and then yes. it's easier yes. for them to agree to something bigger. <coughs> I guess that would maybe be called a yes ladder in sales. In sales, or yes. Like, or, or Same thing. Lock in. What's it called? <laughs> the locking process. Yeah, it, it, it's it's about that, and it's angled on having someone love you for you, and you being authentic. Like in my relationships, I feel one hundred percent comfortable. I can say what I want, do what I want, because she and the girl knows who you are. Where 99% of relationships, got, there's still that kind of like weird belief that the guy, especially for guys who do want to see other women or who want to date other women as well, sometimes, you know, guys a lot of times they're not like they don't want to confess that, you know, or he may have at one time wanted to just date one woman, but after a while he wants to date other women, but it's too late because she's already, you know, been programmed to believe in your relationship that you'll have eyes for her and only her. And if, so, so then the, the, this, this is a fallacy, though. One thing I want to say, the, the, the big issue about normal relationships is that when everything is seemingly equal, um, you know, when, when, as soon as a woman finds out that a guy lied to her about something, let's say a guy cheated on her or whatever, I notice that lots of times it's very easy for that girl to just walk away, right? Very easy. And I think the reason why that I've discovered is because she no longer is in love with that guy that she originally fell in love with. You know, it's not the same guy. She's like, wait. This is not that guy. This is a guy. So I fell in love with a man who said he has eyes for me and only me. And he's not into having sex and with all kind of other girls. Or he's not into this, not into that. But now you are that. You're a hypocrite. And you betrayed me. And you know, that's how they would feel. And there's a lot of hate, a lot of pain. And then they, they just leave you, right? Um, because then, and, and all of a sudden, like, they no longer love that guy anymore. The love just dissipates really fast. And I, I used to be fascinated. I used to see that happen to people all the time. And I said, wow, she loved him so much, now she just let him go, just like that easily? Right. And now I know the reason why, because she, you know, again, if what you thought you loved no longer existed at all, then it's easier for you to fall out of love with that, you know? Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah, I also put that up. I mean, I also think that people get into relationships and evolve. So what you're probably talking about happens a lot in like the beginning stages of a relationship when like they first meet like who the hell is this guy i didn't love him like we're talking like the first yeah. one to three maybe even four years then i feel like people end up breaking up later on maybe because of that but also because we change this is why of course you know, yes. marriage is so difficult and long relationships are so difficult because you evolve into a different person naturally so does the other person and it's important to like grow together because if you don't then it's like whoa who did i marry who is this person who am i dating you know what i mean so that's a good point so let's go yeah. back to what you were saying before because i know i cut you off um, no, cool. like a couple of those things um in terms of like the, the, the yes ladder the lock okay. sequence that a girl would have yeah. to do before you get her to tattoo okay i'll, I'll give you some simple on her because so, so, there's some simple stuff i'm trying to think of like you, you start with a small thing such as like uh, you know, structuring opportunities for her to chase you in any kind of shape or form or for her to initiate things. It's very important. So lots of times I would like just I'll make girls feel really comfortable with reaching out to me first. Even something else like even a first meet a girl, like, okay, like let's say if I want to talk to her on the phone, I might say, Hey, what's up? Even if I initiate it, I'll say, Hey, what's up? Right? She might say, Hey, call me. Right? So then she calls me, right? And she might not even think about it. Okay, I'll call him. Hey, what's up, baby? So then it's like, you know, getting her used to call you know, like doing things first or pursuing in different ways or, um, you know, okay, or tomorrow. So, so setting things up so she's doing a little bit more of the pursuing. Yes, right. Uh, let's say, for example, we're like, you know, tomorrow uh, let's meet this place. Um, maybe something like, I don't know, like maybe come pick me up here and then we'll go together. You know, stuff like that. There's just so much different. Like, I, I, I do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but you always want to see if you can do that in the earlies. Um, just to kind of get her used to that behavior, because when, when people understand about relationships, that when two people meet, anything can happen. Like, like, and this is one thing I learned with the lock-in process. So it seems like what the fuck? Are these guys, is this guy brainwashing people? But no, when people meet, anything can, any kind of thing can formulate. Like, I, we could have a hating relationship. We could have a relationship where you're dominant, I could be dominant. Anything can happen, right? So the idea is for you to understand it. But the weird thing is, I'm doing them. Well, in my opinion, from what I've noticed, like, once a girl is like this kind of into you or whatever. It's, it feels more natural than the other way around. So, for example, I've noticed that like, when girls are really into guys, it's, it doesn't necessarily turn off the guy as much as when a guy is really, really into a girl when a girl's not into him. Because of like, the alpha, beta kind of perspective, you know, so like, if a girl is like, like, being very needy for me, even though it might be a beta vibe for her to be chasing me all the time, it's still, um, you know, I'm st it still kind of fits with like, the alpha man 
And the, the, yeah, the yeah, you're not female. like, oh, she's really needy. She's calling me all the time. Exactly. Like, no. Like, oh, this is nice. Like, it's this is nice. Yeah. But for girls, yeah. it's a lot more like, repulsive. Yeah. Right. And because women are not, because women are designed again to. I mean, most feminine women, especially, they want you know that type of the more the more feminine, they want a more masculine kind of alpha vibe. And if she realizes this guy is always chasing her or whatever, is she you be, that guy who's chasing me? Kind of the, kind of a weird, almost feminine role in a weird way because of the fact that then it shows that she's in charge. You know what I mean? If she has to chase. So that really, that really kind of um, helped to formulate the way I was thinking about this process. And that's why this relationship, this type of relationship works for me a lot more than like, it would seem. You know, a lot of people ask me too, like, uh, oh, sorry, let me go back to the steps though before I continue. That's one step. Another step you can do, very important, that I do in my situation is, since I'm a, I'm a dating coach right now, and you know, I see, you know, I have a lot of info videos, and I have to do this to make money sometimes, whatever. Like, four different girls. That's what I'm known for. Um, I basically, as as soon as they start, well, first of all, I never tell them straight up, like, "Hey, listen." Um, as soon as they, I meet the girl, I don't say, "Hey, guess what? I know we just met like one minute ago, but I have multiple girls, and maybe you could join too." Right? Never do that because she's not telling me, "Hey, so." I recently cheated on my boyfriend with this guy, and I'm kind of slutty sometimes. So maybe you should fuck me too. Part of my French, but so so I mean, girls don't tell you that either, right? So I'm only gonna say this when I'm only tell her when she cares to know. You know, I don't tell her beforehand because she, she doesn't care to know. I'm not gonna tell her yet. So that's a kind of common sense, right? But as, as soon as we're getting to know each other, whatever, that's when I start dropping the hints again, progressively. Like for example, um. So are you Let's say we, we've had sex three times now, so, and then I go myself. So, are you like dating anyone? Like seriously, anything like that? So I might say, uh, what do you mean? I'm, "I'm dating around." You know, yeah. Why not? I keep it very casual, and simple. I should make it. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right. And then a few days later, she might say, uh, "You know, you know." She might come back again with it again. You know, like so. You said that you're dating around, and any girl in particular that you really like, right? And I might be like, ah, you know. This is one girl I'm thinking about a lot. Like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that could happen, but I'm not too sure yet. You know, but again, this is progressively as she's continuing seeing me over and over again, sleeping over, and all this other stuff. Um, so by the time, you know, progressively, I start giving her more and more and more. But as she is falling in love with me, she's falling in love with like the actual real me. And by the time things are really heavy, like hey, when she finally says, "Listen, I want to be with you," I never, I know, I try, I'm also on my way for them to bring that up. Then I'll say, "Hey, listen, well, if you want to be with me." At this time, you have to understand that this is who I am. Da 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 da. Now, this is a simple version. Obviously, there's a lot more. You know, she the girl has to be very into you uh, to pull this off, and almost obsessed to some degree. Uh, some people might say that word. So, on the outside, I could see a lot of girls being like, "Oh, Justin Wayne, he's a scumbag. He's a player. You know, he's a player, right?" But it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a player has well player does have a very negative connotation to it like no one really wants to be called a player i would and player think about the word player right you're playing someone you're, yeah you're it's gaming bad. them you're it's very false it's very um inauthentic like you're lying you're playing them right you're not really doing that you're you're being totally upfront. like hey i'm dating other girls if you don't like it sorry this is kind of what i'm doing and if you're okay with it then great this is what I'm all about. Is that right? Yeah, I agree. There's a difference between being a player and being a womanizer. A player is uh, someone who uses deceit to keep a woman in his life by telling her that she's the only one, and then he ends up doing the same thing to three other girls, right? And the problem with that is that when girls find out, they generally leave him really easily because, again, the person that they're falling for no longer exists. Where a, a womanizer is a guy who's kind of open, with, is a guy's open with who he is, and girls just understand that, and they still end up falling in love with him as they, because the more they hang out with him, they're still gonna fall in love, See, and then they I fall in love like with the girl. Womanizer is also a bad word, like that. Also <laughs> has a negative connotation to it. I don't know if anyone wants to be called a womanizer. Well, I know, but there's no, there's no good word to call. I don't know what kind I mean, of like, positive word you could call a guy with multiple women. Like polygamous? <laughs> huh? Polygamous? Yeah, but this, this is not what it is, though. I, I'll explain the difference between like my my lifestyle and polygamy in a bit, if you want me to. Um, you know, for people who want to know, like obviously my lifestyle is such that there's a video came out recently with uh, me and a bunch of girls I keep around that I picked up from the street. We documented the whole thing, and you know, they pretty much would know that I was dead of the woman. That was basically my 
my my stilo. But at this point, um, I would say this. I would say that you know, even though it's not really a pod, it's not the same as polygamy. Now, po- let's just define what polygamy is quickly. Right? Polygamy and polyamorous lifestyle has to do with the stuff like um, b- all parties believing in that way of life, right? That's basically what it is. So all parties believing in like, hey, it's okay to other people, it's okay to uh, share sexual partners or whatever, or you know, it's, it's like, or it's okay for all these women just to have one man. Like that's their programming, basically. Their program, like, so if I if I have a polyamorous relationship or, or, or if I'm in polygamy, the the girl has to f- have those values already as well. If you know what I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, but it's still a little confusing because. I mean, at this point, if you're dating a girl, um, she has to be okay with the fact that you're dating other people. So she sort of already is into it to okay. a degree. Yeah, so I'll, I'll explain the differences. So, yeah, so in this situation, it's called walk and fast for a reason. Um, so, obviously, you know, all the girls I deal with, none of them originally grew up with the ideology or even wanted before they met me. The idea of like, you know what? I would totally have a boyfriend and I would let him see other girls, but I would still stay devoted to him and not see other men. Like, no girl really thinks that way, you know, and generally speaking. Um, well, that's the question, that's too. Are. are they yes. devoted to you and you only, these girls that you're dating, or are you okay with them dating other men? How does that work? Well, at, at this point, they're, they're devoted to me and only me at this point, um, based you, on what they tell cool me. if they dated other, uh, other men? It depends on whatever we discuss. I'll be cool with it. So let's say if, if she discussed with me, hey, you know what? I'm going to see other guys. It's up for me to say yes or no to that. And if I say I'm not interested in that, you know, then, you know, whatever, whatever. But most of the times if a girl says, like, well, I just want to date you. I just want to be with you anyways. I don't want to date other guys or that, whatever. Then I'll say, yeah, but this is who I am. So whoever you say you are is who you are. Whoever I say I am is who I am. So it's important when we at, – at some point we have the talk. And the talk is basically where you want to exchange bottom line, like, what each other what, – what both of you guys want. So – but I normally ask a girl, you know, hey, so if you know, if, would you want to see other guys too? So the girl is like, no, I, I really love you. And that's what happens most times. I want to just be with you. Then I'll be, all right, cool. But this is, but this is who you are. So whoever you say you are is a woman I'm gonna fall in love with from here on out. I hope you understand that. You know, um, you call them out on their shit. You're like, yeah, of course. You and better I, be authentic uh, too. I'm not looking to be with a girl who's just gonna be with me to please me. But you want a girl who actually believes in that. Which is exactly. right, or am I yeah. saying that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I, I, and I'm very good at probing them properly. Like, I don't, I've, I've really make girls feel like I'm not judging them. Like, like I've really come up with a very strong non judgmental vibe when I'm first dating them, anyways, to make it easier for them to talk about the sexual life and this, this, and the sexual past. Like, That's I never, That's the yeah, I never, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I, I'm always like, I never come across like I'll be judgmental about like what she really likes in her sexual past, right? In the beginning, at least. That way, like, it's easier for her to kind of start giving me information. Um, so, you know, I don't, I never communicate that to her, but that's basically like the, you know, the differences, like poly- polygamy has to do with people who go so already kind of like pre-sold to that idea beforehand versus if you meet a girl and she just happens to put up with it just because she loves you. So all this is done out of like, extreme love as opposed to like, you know, a healthy way of th- uh, kind of like, well, you know what? I want, I just want to, you know, I understand this way of thinking or I, you know, I, I'm for the, I'm pro this, you know. That's not the way it is. They're like normal girls who I met, and um, it's just a pro- progressive situation. However, this it happened naturally because like, well, I really love this guy, and I don't want to I don't want to lose him. So, what life is probably better with this guy, right? And you know, even though I don't like the situation, the fact that he's seeing other girls, life without him even sucks even more. So I rather stay with him, and that's basically how it is. Got it. Yeah. So, this video explaining. How you and I want to get to that in a minute yeah. and talk about you know we kind of did a little bit. I want to get to the point of how you got these girls you know really interested in you, but uh, with the fact that you're dating other women too. Um, but this video got taken down. You told me when we were talking. Oh yeah. About that, you said it got taken down um, off of YouTube. So I mean, what do you? How do you feel about that? Like, why do you think it got taken down? Like, what's the what's the deal? Well, I mean, it's hard to really know, right? Uh, first of all, you know, obviously there's some there's, there's pro-feminist people out there. Second of all, there's other dating competitive companies out there. Because, I mean, let's be realistic. If all the other guys who do infield, like all the infield coaches, 
it's very threatening to them because that's what they do as well. So obviously, you know, I've, you know, you never know that people can purchase stuff and and flag you, flag you, flag you. It just got flagged. I mean, there was no wrong, strong reason behind why it was flagged, why it got pulled down. Obviously, we have re-uploaded it, and um, you can also provide the link here, right, whenever you can. But, um, you know, we, we re-uploaded it recently. It's back up? We had to, to re-upload it and take out one or two potentially suspecting parts of, like, anything. But, the, you know, we, we, we have it on our website as well. So, you know, it's, hard, it's easy to find. If someone just Googles, you know, Justin Wayne, girlfriend tattoos or whatever, um, they should be able to find it. And you, obviously, we could provide a link for them to find it anyways. Um, but it, it got pulled down the first time. It was going viral. Um, people Because, like, again, the pickup world never saw anything like that. And plus, I think what people liked about it the most is, they, they're, they're seeing the process based on what I teach. So I think one issue is that, like, back in the days uh, when people would talk about game and teach game tactics, you would assume that, you know, they, they, whoever their girlfriends are, they met them the exact same way, in the exact same context. And oftentimes that was not the case. You know, and let's say I know some coaches who, you know, would teach a certain type of game, but then he met his, he met his girlfriend through, like, a friend. So it was like it was kind of weird, like contradicting the fact that well, if your if your girlfriend that you met you met through a friend, how this applies to the tactics that you're teaching me and that I'm trying to learn. So um, the great thing about this video is that it shows we teach a lot of street street approaches. So it shows me talking to these girls on the street. We capture everything from the beginning. We documented the whole process, um, and that way people could see tactic per tactic and everything and of, of how this flows with more, more than one girl. Yeah. Um, and I think that's probably, you know, that's, so it was a really kind of beautiful work of art. And I think that's why it became viral. A lot of people loved it because it showed beyond like just the pickup, you know, it shows like fights, a girl that like, complaining and how you deal with it, you know, and how you manage that properly. It just shows a lot more, uh, depth to it. So, um, again, is this something I'm going to do all the time? No, basically I believe in this type of idea, like do what you want to do. So right now, as long as I'm authentic, if I want to have multiple girls, if any, if whoever signs up for that. Fine. She signed up for it. You know, she knows who I am. She could easily walk away easily. They have other suitors. It got to suit them, pursue them. So you know, she just they decide to stay. So I'm gonna like, well, fine. You want to stay? You want to like, you know, you want to stay with me? Then fine. Dude, you gotta change your tagline to mine. <laughs> Justin Wayne teaching you how to get the girl while still being your genuine self. It's the same thing. You know, it's funny, but people, I guess it's just because, like, you know, the, the controversial the idea of info pickup videos in general. I think the reason why my videos are controversial is because it, it, it doesn't demonstrate me as a person connecting with the audience, like, in how yours is. Like, you connect with your audience, and you, know, you look at them in the eye, and you talk to them. Where my videos are, like, this, it's kind of more like, like in the ring, right? Like, you know, in the battlefield, right? As some people would say. You know, I look at it as just like mating dance. You know, that's what I look at it as. But, you know, you see me in, in the ring talking to girls. So some people can feel different mix, mixture of emotions. Sometimes it's ego-based. Sometimes it's threatening also when people see infill videos. So it's one of those things that I, I have to deal with. People are always trying to flag my videos. So it's a sad reality of life. But, um, you know, and I've got a lot of, got some hate meals as well. Um, like, you know, one guy was saying, hey, you're manipulating these poor girls. Um, you're a scumbag, um, you know, and uh, let me see. Another one was like, uh, yeah, I get a lot of hate mail, and but I get a lot of love as well. So, hey, what can I say? It's polarizing. It all yeah. balances out. So, all right, so uh, we're going to wrap up in just a second here, but I want to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, just give us like, one, you know, give us like one to two or three of like your most uh, powerful tips in terms of like what you're doing to get these girls really attracted to you. Now, I'm going to say one of them that I've kind of analyzed from what you've been doing. You can use this one out of your three or not. But Thank one you. thing I think that you're doing, and it's basically what I'm teaching also, that's getting these girls really attracted is that you are being so authentic and so you and so real. And girls really – they fall in love with that. You know, the second that you're putting on some sort of fake vibe or they're not really sure who you are, they you start to lower trust and it's harder to get any really anybody to like you if you don't have that trust built. And it's like when you're coming off so real and they can trust you, it's like, oh, well, this is a guy that I know I'm always going to be with him and no one else. And there's like it takes out that kind of shadiness. And therefore builds attraction. So that's one thing that I've kind of analyzed from the way you teach and the stuff that you talk about. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Uh, if we're talking about in terms of like the general overarching principle, it's 100% accurate. And 
I, I always say this has to do more so with maintaining attraction, what you're saying, especially maintaining, because, you know, we're talking from a perspective of after the mating dance, after the song and dance of you approaching her, talking to her, getting to know her, like when they start, when it starts getting more serious, yes, that's when it's like the most powerful ever, because that's when it counts. And the fact that I'm so authentic, like I've had girls cry happy tears, telling me like, listen, like you're so real with me and I don't know, you, you know, and they, they appreciate it because they understand how hard it is to tell a girl, hey, listen, I'm sorry, like I'm going out with this girl tonight. Yeah, you know, it was hard for me too when I first started trying to do this stuff. Like, damn, this is hard to do. Like, have to tell another girl. Cause, cause the thing is that these girls will still love me, so it's like hard to say, listen, like, this other girl has a tattoo as well, and I'm going to go out with her tonight. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's just, you know, it could feel funny, but um, over time they be, they get used to it and they just understand it. And um, obviously, you know, so I agree with that. So that's one point. The second point I would say is this: what I am a big advocate advocate of, I advocate the idea of selling. Um, romance to women it's called a romantic connection that's all that's what i do in the initial pickup so i believe that everything counts especially from the beginning and let's just talk about let's just say you meet in the most difficult situation which is the stranger approach right versus soul circle right it's very important to have a really good takeoff to, to pull something like this off you know um so i always tell people first you know one thing that i do fundamentally different than most people that i know who do info videos or whatever is that most guys who even have some decent success, even the best some of the good guys I know, they focus too much when they first meet a girl on, on selling sex, whether they know it or not, um, based on the, the, underlying, uh, arc, uh, the underlying stuff that they're doing. They sell kind of more just sex or just general social uh, connections or sexual connections, but they're not selling the most important connection. And I used to have this issue as well. Um, which is why they don't really get that much dates. So that's why you see a lot of info videos, uh, recorded videos, where a guy talks to a good number, but you never see a follow-up date ever. Or you even be kissed her sometimes, like you still don't see a follow-up date. And one of the main reasons why is because uh, sex is something that's so common to, uh, so easy for a woman to get, right? Because you know, girls, guys are always pursuing women for sex, right? So to, to girls, it's not that valuable of a commodity to them. Uh, that alone was not enough. So let's say she had a great sexual, sexual connection with you when she first met you. It's not enough for her to care to see you again and, uh, and continue. It's not enough value for her. So that's a low value proposition. Because even an ugly girl can have sex with a high caliber, look, a good looking guy. So instead, I focus on selling uh, a romance, right? And that changed everything in my game. And this is, probably, this is one of like, the, the, the beginning points of like, that's going to transform everything. And I sell romance very well. It's like the mating dance. The better you pr get practice selling romance, the better you, you're stronger that romantic connection will be. And... So I remember when I made a fundamental change, all of a sudden, I, my flake rate dramatically changed. Girls started coming back to see me again, right? Once I started selling them romance and positioning that to their brain, um, it's just because the thing about it, romance is the high, the highest, probably the highest out of survival, after survival, is the highest thing, she, you know, you can market to her because that's going to give her incentive to see you again. Uh, sex nash will happen because the truth is deep inside, you know, media both media and evolution help us. So media, social, so social programming helps with romance because you know, there's a lot of movies that talk about it. Every female novel talks about romance, romance, romance. So that helps us. Plus the actual evolutionary type of psychology background of it where the idea that you know, if a woman has sex with the wrong guy, you know, she can actually get pregnant with him, pregnant with his baby, and if, if he doesn't love her or if there's no romance, you know, she will die because you know, back in the day it was fucking brutal. Like if you get pregnant, if the girl gets pregnant, don't want to take care of the child. It's a terrible process. Both of them would die. A terrible experience. So the romance solidified that as well. So from all angles, romance is just the strong solution. And I would say it's the cure to all evils in the dating world in general. Um, so and once you sell that property. You're talking about there's like three connections. I feel like I want to make a video on this. Yes, there, yeah. There's, there's, I, I there's talk the about, social, oh, the sexual, and the romance. Those three. Yes. I, I, yeah, I, just, I love this topic. It's like one of my favorite topics because like, it also is funny because this is the evolution of pickup. In the pickup industry, the first generation was based on sec uh, social connections, right? It's like the old mystery methods and stuff like that. It was a good system in terms of for social mechanics, really good basic stuff. And But the thing is that... It, it, it was selling a social connection. If you, I don't know if you remember that those old those, that method back in the day. I'm sure you do. Yeah. The I method. Stuff, yeah. It, was, it, it was also it was all about social connections, though. Think about it. It was never any. There was no strong romantic stuff. There was no strong sexual stuff in it. It was all more about talk to the girl and, and pay attention to value. That's all it was. Yeah. So it was, lot, it was tame. Just exactly. So yeah. lots, most people um, didn't get that great results from that, including myself, because of that. It was a very lukewarm results. 
Uh, but it was still great for starting point of the evolution of pickup, which is only like 10, 15 years old as a science that we're doing right now. But then there's uh, the second generation of pickup that I like to call when people start doing sexual-based connections, right? And this is when guys started getting more sex consistently because they kind of went straight to the point. Or uh, they kind of, you know, went direct, more authentic, direct sexual. Listen, I want to take you home tonight in the club, that type of energy. And that was great. But um, the, the issue with that connection is that most of the times it, it was hard to keep girls around. Or if sex didn't happen the first day, then most of the times, uh, you know, it wouldn't be enough to for the girl to come back on a date. So it was, the flake rate was still very, very high. And then, then so like I went all the generations, and after I was like, wait, you know, I'm still getting flaked. It's hard to meet the hotter girls. Like, how do I do this? How do what can I sell? Cause, and I was thinking like, what can I offer the team on a date again? External value, like like. But then no, there's nothing external that everyone would want. But what's one thing that I could sell a girl? I thought about thought about for a very long time, and I was like, wait, romance. That's it. And then I started focusing on, on romance and, and, and creating stuff to a market and position romance to her until I figured it out, a nice smooth mating dance that does it. And after that, everything was just a lot better. And it just, so I think that's, the, that's like the third generation of pickup. Your ROI on love. Increased. It's funny because you're kind of talking dramatic. about this like it's business speak. You're like, it, you got to market <laughs> to the girl. you got to sell to the girl love. I mean, I mean, again. So, but th this is, but this is the question, though, right? A lot of people will, will talk about the authenticity of this, right? Because the question that I get a lot is, well, are you saying that if I talk to a girl right now and I want to, you know, have sex with her, and I sell her romance, is that misleading? And here's my answer to this, right? Um, there's always, there's always going to be a great point. The romantic connection in a stranger post context, especially, is not the, when you first do it. It's not extremely powerful on its own. You still have to nurture that. All it means is that you find a guy to be a yes for girl, you know, a girl who's willing to see what happens with you. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that she's like, her mind's made up, okay, we're going to get married, and if you don't marry me, I'll kill myself. It's nothing like that. Like, the first day I meet her, let's say I talk to her for 30 minutes and I get a romantic connection, all it means is that, uh, you know, I like her, she likes me, and we're both willing to move forward in a romantic direction together. Right, to see where it goes, right? And even for girls themselves, like a lot of times they're not looking for romance either that much. But the fact that it's offered to them still, they still know in the back of their head, like, well, it's a it's a high value, it's still a high value proposition. So like, well, I don't like this guy that much yet, or, or I like him, but I'm not sure if I want romance in my life yet. But, you know, why not take the opportunity to see where it goes still? So it's still some is this a lot more kind of reason for to see you again. And I call it the potential boyfriend type of thing, basically. I want to be the potential boyfriend, which means it's a nice little zone where, like, she or you don't expect too much yet, but it still gives her enough incentive to see you again under that romantic context. Right. Okay. Let's do our third tip, and then okay. we'll wrap up. So what's – what's I, I'm kind of lost here. Okay, no problem. I thought we were on number two. I uh, thought we were on number three already. I don't remember. But I'll, I'll just throw one last one out yeah, there. Yeah, you know what? Um, let's yeah. just – in a way, let's – um with whatever your third tip is going to be, just kind of sum it up in, in terms of giving the message to the guy yeah. in terms of how this all works. Because right now, the guy who's watching is trying to learn more and understand more how to connect with women, how to date women, how to have sex with women because they're struggling right now. So, like, what's what would be your message to okay, this is, guys? Okay, this is my bottom line message, Trip. Um, all right. Whew. All right, this, is, this concept is a little bit off from what off the rails that people would think I'm going to say. But I have to keep it real. Nothing, a lot of dating advice out there, as we both know, Trip, is oversimplified, right? And obviously, it's good packaging. It makes people feel better. But if you really want to master seduction or master yourself and master seduction, you have to take the best path to that. And in reality, as Trip, we both know, sometimes learning dating life could be complicated. There's so much information out there. You know, how do you really learn step by step? What do you do? How do you improve? How do you tweak for better results? It's, it can get complex. And, you know, a lot of people want to want to oversimplify things. They want to say, oh, well, all you have to do is this. All you have to do is that. It's simple. You know, just be confident. You know, we always hear that, right? Which is true. You want to be confident. But how does one transform to be confident? So my best solution, if you, the, the number one option I would give anyone right now, someone says, well, what can I do right now? Like, like, I don't, I'm, like, I'm a busy guy, I'm in school, I'm in college, or I'm working, and I don't have time to really, like, reinvent the wheel. How do I know how to get great results the fastest way possible? How do I transform from this guy who's okay with women or not good with them at all to a, to a man that women just love and the hottest girls just love me? How can I transform to be that? And the only thing I can conceivably think of right now is what everyone else, what 
all successful people do, and which is get coaching. Get coaching from somebody that's you know that's trusted, like me or Trip, but get coaching where someone can tell you exactly what to learn, even learning, even if I gave you a book, even a book is not, like people don't remember more than 10% of books they read. Even I sell products, we both sell products. Products are great for, you know, get a cheaper price, but if you can afford it, get coaching. It's very important. Um, the most important thing I can think of. Um, that's like, if you look at sports, uh, any kind of sports player, let's say for example, um, Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan had a coach named Phil Jackson. He's known to be one of the best coaches of all time, right? I'm from Chicago. And, I know that. Yes, in Chicago Bulls, right? So this is my question to you, right? And if, I, if you do get po- coaching, not only do you want to get coaching, but you want to get a long-term coaching program. It's like, you know, whether you're trying to learn tennis or basketball, let's look at Michael Jordan. Like, when he, if, if Phil Jackson, you know, the coach of the century, whatever, if that guy only coached Michael Jordan three times, would he really have been that great? Would, would, would Michael Jordan have been that great? It is three times? No. In reality, Phil Jackson was with him like um, years and years and years and, and working on his craft. So the reason why I'm saying all this is because like, when you guys want to become successful in anything, you, w- you really want to align yourself with people that can really help you. But people who also specifically, that their job is just that. And that's what I think, uh, that, that's like the, the best thing. Because I can tell, oh, read this book, read that book. But in reality, I know the truth already. And this is through coaching. And... You know, someone who can hold your hand and tell you exactly what you need to do because your job shouldn't be to have to try to reinvent the wheel because even training itself is an art form. How to train. Um, you know, everyone has unique advantages and disadvantages. So how you adapt to that? It's just so much effort. That's why a lot of people end up getting a plateau in game because they just don't have the guidance and the proper motivation to you know, go out and field more or someone to talk to professionally. So I, basically, that's what I advocate. And um, I, I know you, you used to coach before. I think you still coach sometimes yeah, here. Yeah, they're still coaching. I mean, yeah. here's the deal. You know, we're talking about a skill, and the fastest way to get better at any skill is to have someone coach you. Whatever word you want to say, coach, teach, um, you train, know, whatever it is, train. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you want to get better at piano, you get a piano teacher. You want to start bulking up or losing weight, you want to do it fast, you get a trainer. Is it for everybody? No, but it's you know it's proven to be the fastest way. So I mean I can't argue with that. Yeah, I mean I, I have a personal trainer right now as we speak, you know, and, and I've been getting much better results than when I was always trying to on my own, trying to be cheap. And one thing I also learned from very successful like millionaire friends I have, they always tell me, listen, um, you know, it's good to like try to save money, but when it comes to the, something that's very important to you, right? That's the West when you. That's when it's okay to you know to spend. So for example, if you have a like, let's say if you love phones, you know, get a great phone because that's, that's something you spend a lot of time with. If you love dating or if you love women or if you want to improve it, if that's really important to you, again, products are okay. Products are great too for certain things, but it's not going to be as effective as coaching. So that's why like recently, you know, we came up with this program. Um, you know, call six months to mastery, right? It's a pretty good program, and we tell guys uh, we basically, you know, work with them through six whole months. You know, every week they get assignments. We call them, they call us, they complain to us. Sometimes they cry to us, and we're like, "No worry, everything will be okay." Sometimes they celebrate with us. Yes, she says she loves me. I'm like, "Yay!" You know, you know. So we have a whole team that does that for people, and it's like, you know, because I, I took that approach from personal training field, and, and it really that's the only way I saw people really transform consistently. And I think you used to do that as well, from what I remember, Trip. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we still do coaching and uh, I mean, guys get great results. You know what I mean? I yep. did. You know, when I started learning this stuff, I had a mixture. I got coaching and I bought products and I went to seminars. I did everything. I mean, I think every guy should do if you want. I mean, it depends how good you want to get. If you want to become a coach, you have to do everything. Yes. Uh, and it, but you just really want to get good at it. Do everything. Read all the books. Do all the coaching. Hire multiple coaches. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we might sit here being like, yeah, hire, you know, hire us, work with us. Like, honestly, honestly, you should work with like <laughs> as many people as you can get, you know, watch other YouTube channels, like go do it, buy other products, understand where everyone's coming from, learn all the different stuff. And then you can see what works for you. What I did was I kind of took a mixture of what I learned from my own infield experience and also learned from books and coaches and stuff like that. And then I took that and kind of formulated my own you know, theories and thoughts in terms of how to teach it all. But, you know, guys should be reaching out to everything they can to learn everything. I mean, 
you know, you and I are learning how to even build our YouTube channels. So I don't know about yeah. you, but I'm always learning from multiple people. I learn from you too. Like I'm learning, like, hey, what are you doing in terms of YouTube videos? What are you, yeah. what are you putting out there? How are you marketing it? Things like that. It's like, yeah, learn as much as you can from different people to get, you know, the best results that you can. And if if that's something you want to be dedicated to, and of course, if it's not, then, I mean, I wouldn't bother or waste your time. But of course, of course. yeah. Awesome, man. This has been a great interview. Justin Wayne, ladies and gentlemen, or just you sitting at home watching this. If you want to learn more about Justin, I'll put a little annotation. You can subscribe to him. Check out his channel. He's got a ton of crazy videos, very highly controversial and uh, and just totally wild. And, of course, you're going to learn a lot of stuff. He, he jam-packs the value into every single one of his videos. So check him out. Justin, thanks for doing this, man. And, uh, yeah, hopefully maybe we'll do something else to do it again because I feel like there's so much more to talk about. But thanks for doing this. Cheers. Okay.